Hi everyone, welcome back to another virtual lesson. Today our lesson is going to be all about pollinators. So I'm sure many of you know, but if you don't, pollination is the process that flowers use to help them make seeds to make more flowers. Some insects, like bees, butterflies, moths, even bats, like to eat nectar and pollen as their food. And when they're looking for the nectar and pollen, and they land on a flower, they might get pollen all over their body and on their hands and feet and legs. Pollen is that yellowy kind of powdery substance that's on most flowers. And when they get this pollen on their body and then fly to the next flower or plant, they're helping to cross pollinate all the plants, which helps more plants grow. Between 75 and 95% of flowering plants need these pollinators to help them pollinate. They can't do it alone. And one out of every three bites of food you eat is due to pollinators. So they're very, very important. Pollinators also help support a healthy ecosystem so that we can have fresh air, clean water, and healthy plants and animals. So first we're gonna start with the warm-ups, and then we're gonna move into the lesson all about pollinators. We're gonna learn how to draw some bees, some butterflies, and a hummingbird. Okay, so for our warm-up today, we're going to be drawing uh, a drawing for each letter of our name. And the thing you draw has to start with the letter that you're working with. So the first letter of my name is an M. So I'm going to draw something that starts with the letter M. So I'm going to draw male. Okay, so this is my male. The next letter I'm going to do is an E. So I'm gonna draw an ear. Then I'm gonna draw something that starts with a K. I'm going to draw a kite. Then I'm gonna draw something that starts with an A. I'll draw an apple. Then I'll draw something that starts with a Y. I'm going to draw yarn. This is my ball of yarn. A little string coming out. Then I'll draw something that starts with an L. I'm going to draw a light bulb. And then finally, I'm gonna draw another thing that starts with an A. I will draw an acorn. All right, and that is my name. So you could pick any objects as long as they start with the letter that is in your name. So um, that's it for the warm up, and we're gonna move into the lesson. Okay, so as I said before, uh, today's lesson is going to be focused around pollinators. Now, we're going to be focusing on three different kinds of pollinators, the bee, the butterfly, and the hummingbird, but there's lots of other kinds. So first, we're going to be starting with the bee. I'll teach you guys how to draw a bee, and then I'll teach you guys how to draw a bee on a flower um, while it's, it's helping to pollinate. So first, we're going to start by drawing a circle. Next, you're going to draw a half circle on top of that circle. And then you're going to draw this big oval shape. So this is the head, the body, and the body. Next, we're gonna draw the wings. So you're gonna start in the circle and you're gonna do a straight line out that's gonna curve, go back towards the body, stop, jut out again, and then back towards the body. And you're gonna do that again on the other side as well.
Next, we're gonna draw the legs. You're gonna start with a rectangle, then you're gonna do another small rectangle, another small rectangle, and then a foot. We're gonna do the same on this side. A rectangle, rectangle, tiny rectangle, and a little foot. The bee also has two sets of legs in the back. So again, rectangle, smaller rectangle, smaller rectangle, and a foot. Rectangle, smaller rectangle, rectangle, and a foot. And we're just gonna do that one more time. Rectangle, 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 foot, rectangle, 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 foot. Okay, so now the bee has all its legs, we just need to give it some antennas. So they're just these two little curved lines that come out from the head. Then we're gonna draw a line across the head because it's gonna have some big eyes that are gonna go right here. And then we wanna give him some stripes. So you can go ahead and give him some stripes along the body. And if you're coloring this in, you can color it yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. Then we're just gonna give the wings a little bit of definition by first drawing a line that goes from the body to the tip of the wing on both sides. And then you can just add some lines. These are like kind of like the veins of the wing. Um, you can kind of draw them any shape you want. I'll do it on the other side as well. They don't have to match, so don't worry about that. And there we go, now we have a bee. The next thing I'm gonna show you is a bee um, helping to pollinate a lavender flower. So you've probably heard of lavender. Um, it's a bright purple flower. And I'm just gonna show you guys how to draw that quickly. And then we're gonna draw the bee on the flower. So first we're gonna draw the stem. I'm just gonna come up like that. And we can draw the leaves at the top of the stem and we're just gonna add some little flowers of lavender Lavender can grow really tall, so you can make this as tall as you'd like, but we're gonna stop here for now. And then we're gonna add another leaf right around the middle. And we'll draw a little bit more lavender. And draw some more leaves down at the bottom. And then we're gonna draw a bee sitting on top of the flowers. So we're gonna start with a circle. This is its head. We're gonna have its antennas facing down, like this. You can see one of its eyes. Next, we're gonna draw a circle like this. And then the rest of its body curved like that. Its wings will be back because it's not using them right now. And its legs are going to be upward, kind of inside the flower, because that is how the bee um, picks up the pollen. It gets on its legs and all over its body, and that's how it spreads the pollen around. And then we're going to add the stripes. and then add a little definition to the wings. I think adding this to the wings really helps make it look like a bee. And there you go, so you have a bee on a lavender plant. So if you're coloring this, 
Then the flowers are going to be purple and the leaves are going to be green. Okay, so the second pollinator that we're going to be drawing is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. So first I'll show you how to draw the butterfly and then we're going to draw it on top of a, a flower pollinating it. So first we're going to start with the body. We're going to draw a long uh, sort of pointy oval that is going to go up to a head. like that. Then we're going to draw the wings. So it's going to go out. It's going to be um, kind of like lumpy, I guess, or wiggly as it comes down. We'll draw a line to connect to that. And then from the bottom, we're going to draw a little lump, down, another little lump, up, to a wiggle, a wiggle, another wiggle, and another wiggle. And we're going to do the same on the other side. I know it's hard to get both sides to look the same, so you can just do your best. Mine's not going to be perfect either. Wiggle, 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 wiggle the center okay so next we're gonna add the antennas just two lines that come out like that and then we're gonna add little feet here which again just help the pollinator pick up the pollen next the eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly has a pretty unique wing pattern. So we're going to do our best to draw it. It's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. We're going to start with a line that comes out like that. We're going to do the same on the other side. And then we're going to add these little shapes in the bottom part of the wing. And this specific butterfly is yellow and black. And right now we're drawing the little yellow dots that would be in the black part of the wing. So we're going to do the same at the top, just little circle-y, oval-y type of shapes that are going to slowly become these um, half circles. So these are more kind of half circle-y. We're going to do the same on this side. Just like that. And then on the inner part of the wing, we're going to draw the... Um, there's going to be these like black kind of lines, so we're going to start here, go up, do the same on this side, and then we're going to go from this point across the line we just made and up, and do it on this side again, just like that, and then from this point we're going to draw a line down. From here as well and from here. We're gonna do that on this side as well. Okay and then for the top part of the wings we're gonna start from here. We're gonna go out and up and we're gonna do the same on this side. And then from this line, we're going to draw lines that meet up with this line here. 
So just like this. And then there's these big um, sort of like fuzzy lines that come down. So we're gonna draw those. And if you're coloring it, then these fuzzy lines that we're drawing right now are gonna be black. And these lines kind of fuzz out and then they meet up with this line here. And do the same on this side. And then on the body, it's a fuzzy dark line that goes down the center. And then we're going to add a little bit of a fuzzy black line beside the body. Just like this. So you can color it in with your pencil or with your pencil crayons or markers or whatever you're using. Okay, so that's the butterfly. I know it was a little complicated, but I think if you go step by step, you guys are going to be able to do it really well. Next, I just wanted to show you a drawing of the butterfly on a flower. So we're going to start by drawing the middle of the flower. It's going to go up like a half circle. And then it's all these little sort of pointy, um, fluffy things. And this is what is going to be holding the pollen. So you can draw, it kind of like looks a little hairy. Just like that. All right, so that's the center of our flower. And then we're gonna draw petals that come out. And you can definitely color this, make it any color you'd like. The one that I'm drawing right now is pink, but it probably doesn't have to be. Okay, so now that we have our flower, you can also draw a stem coming from the flower. We're going to draw the butterfly sitting on top. So we're going to start with its body. It's going to kind of curve down just like this. You can give it a little head. And then you're going to draw its little legs kind of coming out from, from its body. Okay. Next, we're gonna draw the wings, and you're gonna start like that, go up, and we remember it's kind of wiggly, coming down, and then more wiggly until it goes out to a point. And then down. And then you can draw the other wing that you're going to see kind of from the side, just like that. Don't forget to add the antennas. And then we're going to draw the pattern on the wing again. So starting here, we're going to go wiggly wiggly across, wiggly 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 on these two. gonna come down like that and you're gonna draw the little circles and then for the pattern on the wing we're gonna start the same way we did last time just like that and then drawing lines out And the same here, just like last time. Lines going outward. And then you can go ahead and put those um, black lines. And then you can give the body the black stripe as well. Okay, 
Okay, so that is the butterfly on the flower and just flying. And we're gonna move on to the final pollinator. So the final pollinator that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to start with its body. So it's really small. Remember, hummingbirds are tiny. And we're just going to draw this pointy shape with a curved line at the top, because this is where we're going to add its head. Just like that and it has a really long beak. And the beak is how it gets the pollen and the nectar and everything out of the flowers. So next we're gonna draw its um, feathers. We have one coming down like that, another coming down just like that, very pointy and small. Another one here, another one, and another one. And then it has really tiny little feet that you can add. And then we're gonna draw the wings. So a line that comes straight out from the body and tapers with this kind of wiggly line because it has so many feathers towards the body. Then from here, we're gonna draw a wiggly line that goes up. And from this line, we're gonna draw lines out. And these are the feathers. Just like that. And then we're gonna draw its pattern on its um, body. So it kinda has this wiggly line here, and this area is white. And then from here and here, this area is more green colored and it has these sort of wiggly feather patterns on its belly that get bigger as you go down on its body. Kind of like that. Now this area has really small wiggly feather pattern that I'm just going to represent with these wiggly lines. The reason it's called the ruby-throated hummingbird is because right here is really bright red. So if you're coloring it, this area is going to be a super, super bright red. And we're going to give it an eye. And it has this sort of line on the top of its head where this area is really green. All right. And you can add some of that texture to the wing as well. And there you have it, that's the hummingbird. And hummingbirds like lots of different flowers, but one of the kinds they like kind of looks like this. Starting with the petal coming out. You guys may have seen an emoji that kind of looks like this. I think it looks a lot like that emoji. It's this bright pink flower. like that with these little circles in there and a line that goes down each petal with smaller lighter pink lines and this whole flower is really pink so you can draw the, the hummingbird um, the same way, just um, taking the poll pollen and the nectar from the flower. So I'm just going to draw that here, so I'll draw the beak. I don't quite have room for the whole bird, but I can draw some of it here. And you can draw it just like, just 
just like I showed you here, drinking the pollen and the nectar from the flower. And definitely feel free to color these in. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna add some photos to the video of what these, uh, what colors these are, so that you guys can have an easier time coloring them. And that is all for the pollinators today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed drawing those pollinators and I just want to let you guys know a little bit more about pollinators if you are looking for more information. So Toronto actually has a special pollinator protection strategy that they use when they make their parks and gardens around the city. So when you go to a park or a garden and you see lots of flowers, those flowers are put there specifically so that butterflies and bees and other insects can help to pollinate. And you can find more information about what Toronto does to help the pollinators here at this link. If you guys want to see some pollinators in action on a large scale, then you can go to the Humber Bay Butterfly Habitat. It's this huge park that's specifically designed to help the butterflies. And you can go there and see lots of different plants that butterflies love, and you might even get to see some really pretty butterflies. I'm also going to put some information below in the description for how to help pollinators on your